Mistakes to avoid when buying property. Today we're going to focus on nine common mistakes when buying a house. I chose nine because of the month of September and also it's my birth month. Happy belated birthday to me. Enough about me though. Sounds like you're excited and thinking about buying a new home, huh? First of all, congrats. But let's be real about this stuff. There's a few traps that you're definitely going to want to avoid and I'm here to help you dodge them like a pro. And real quick before we dive right in if you like what you're hearing or just like my face hit that subscribe button and stay until the end because i've got a bonus tip just for you that's gonna save you like a lot of cash seriously hello everybody i am jordan wilson with rockwell real estate and today we are going to be breaking down the biggest mistakes that people make when buying a home and trust me, trust me, trust me. You do not want to be one of them. We're going to start with numero uno, letting emotions drive your decision. Emotions. Look, I get it. Falling in love with the house happens. But if you let your heart do all the talking, you might just miss out on, I don't know, uh, minor details like, hmm, can we actually afford this, honey? You know, you want to be able to afford the house and you don't want to let those dreamy hardwood floors blind you. I've got a funny example for you. I had a client who walked into this place, this really beautiful home, but immediately they fell head over heels for it. Well, she did. Uh, they were already picturing the family barbecues in the backyard and just getting super excited about the property. But guess what? They missed the fact that the roof was basically, well, it needed to be just completely replaced, leaks and all this good stuff. But man, my goodness, that would have dreamed this, uh, turn that dreamy house into a leaky disaster. Do not let shiny countertops, shiny floors, those kind of things blind you to some seriously important stuff seen it all too much. Numero dos, underestimating future expenses. You definitely got a budget for this kind of stuff. You save for the house, that's great. But surprise, there are secret costs lurking in the shadows like moving taxes, uh, that fancy couch that you just have to have. Honey, we have to have this couch. Seriously, those extra costs are gonna sneak up on you like a like a ninja. Got a serious example for you. I had these uh, this young couple with some clients who thought they had everything budgeted down to the last dollar, almost even to the last penny. But what they didn't realize was that closing costs, moving expenses, and some surprise repairs started piling all the way up. Before you know it, they were maxed out in no time. But luckily, we adjusted their budget before it was too late, and we were able to make it work, but it was a close call. Lesson learned, those hidden expenses can sneak up on you. Oh, I thought it was an expense. Numero tres, getting lured by discounts. Discounts are great, don't get me wrong. I love a good deal. But if the price is too good to be true, well, it's probably because something's hiding, like, for example, shoddy construction or, or a project that'll sometime finish around maybe never. No thanks. Here's a cautionary example for you guys. Let me tell you about a client who pretty well just jumped at a house that was discounted big time. I mean, it was a huge discount. Sounded amazing until we found out that the builder had a reputation for cutting corners. Pretty sad, but you know, they would have ended up paying more in repairs than they what they would have saved, essentially saved. Sometimes a discount is just a red flag and not at all a bargain. Be cautious about that. Uh, number four, we're gonna talk about not researching enough. I mean, you want to buy a car without kicking the tires, right? Yeah. Same goes for a house. Dig in, research every corner of that deal, even if that means becoming a temporary real estate detective. Or hit me up. Empowering example for this one. I had a client who had their heart set on this one neighborhood. It was trendy, you know, the place to be. It's hopping, it's popping, it is what it is. The cool kids are hanging out. But after some digging, we found a spot just a little further out that had better schools, lower taxes, and even more bang for their buck. They wouldn't have known if they didn't do their homework though. A little research goes a long way. I mean, just a little research goes a long way. Let's move on to number five, resale homes. So resale homes can be a gold mine. I mean, or it could be a money pit. Yeah, they might need some love, but if you're smart about it, you could go score a sweet deal. Just make sure you're not up for signing for a full-time renovation nightmare. Goodness. 
Here's a realistic example for you. One couple I worked with bought an older home because they love the character, they love the charm, but after moving in, they realized that that character and charm came with a few extra costs, like a new roof that it needed, uh, plumbing repairs, and a few other things. But thankfully, they were prepared with a budget for maintenance, but it could have got hairy, could have got a lot sticky, and could have got a lot worse. So just please know what you're getting into with older homes and planning ahead does make all the difference. Please be mindful of that. As we move into number six, we are going to talk about future family requirements. For myself, I've got kids, always thinking about that. If you've got kids or maybe planning on having some down the road, then you're gonna wanna make sure your future home isn't just good for now, but for later as well. Just like, do you want Mr. or Mrs. now, right now, or do you want Mr. or Mrs. right? Definitely some things you gotta be mindful of. And uh, you know, trust me, you do not want to be the one that's out there doing the school run from 45 minutes away. I understand that you have to sometimes, but you know, it's good to, to you know, keep that in mind. And so with that said, here's a forward thinking example. I have a lot of couples, uh, as you could tell, but I did, uh, in this specific example, I had a couple that uh, bought their first home and they were thinking that it was perfect for their small family. They loved it, they had a little dog. Fast forward a few years and now they're expecting a baby. Well, not just baby, they were twins and suddenly that cute little house felt like it was closing in on them, getting a little smaller. They ended up finding something bigger, but it made me realize how important it is to think long-term when buying as well. Making sure your home can grow with you and your family, very importante. We're gonna move on to number seven. I love the number seven, not consulting family. Oh, that's tough. Yeah, trust me on this. Get the family involved. You know, you think you think you know what they want, but next thing you know, your partner's asking why there's no space for their dream garden, or you know, maybe why why the house isn't uh, near their favorite coffee shop. My wife is an incredible fan of uh, honey breve lavender, honey lavender breve. So I know the importance of coffee being nearby because that's a go-to for her, but. I've got another example for you to be relatable on this. So one time uh, I had a gentleman come to me totally ready to buy. He just got involved with this uh, lady as his partner, came to check out the house and they really loved it. So I get excited when people love the property and so I wanted to share that with them. But one of them wasn't completely on board. It happens all too often because it was too far from their workplace. I get it. After taking, uh, after talking through it, they realized that they needed something more centrally located. Had they not communicated, we know communication is key, folks. And had they not communicated, they made up, might have ended up with major buyer's remorse. You got to involve the whole family. It makes the process so much smoother. <sighs> I know that firsthand. Let's jump into number eight. Planning for contingencies. Ooh, contingencies. So we know life happens, job changes, uh, divorce, you know, all these different things where essentially life circumstances. It happens a lot in real estate. It's a big driving factor for people re for moving, family growing, so on. But you know, there's surprise expenses. The universe is just throwing all these curveballs at you. So plan ahead for when things go sideways. You're for sure going to be thanking me later when you're not stressing over how to make that mortgage payment. For an example on this, I would talk about a preparedness example. And I had a client uh, get a surprise job offer in another city right after buying their house. Luckily, they planned for this possibility and had chosen a home that was easy to rent as a great option uh, for when they moved out or for when they moved actually, they were able to rent the house out and cover the mortgage uh, without a hitch. It's definitely a great option to consider if something like that comes up and whether it's a new job or a job loss or just a crazy turn of events, being able to do something like that will allow for uh, uh, providing you some peace of mind. Now we are on to number nine, focusing solely on aesthetics. Sure, that place might look like Instagram perfect. You know how that goes, the right angles, the lights, and you can make it pretty later, you know? Focus on the structure. Cosmetic things are things that you could change. This example for you guys about this one. I had a client who absolutely fell in love with this house because, and I quote, the kitchen backsplash was everything. Oh my gosh, it was so dreamy. But what they didn't notice was that the plumbing was old and it needed major repairs. So let's just say they dodged a huge headache. 
by getting an inspection before buying. The moral, looks can be deceiving. We know it all too well. So make sure you dig a little deeper than just the pretty stuff. Now let's circle back. Bonus, Bonus two. two. Checking your loan eligibility. Knowing how much the bank's willing to lend you can save you major heartbreak. We've got a great network. I'd love to get you connected with, with the lender. Feel free to reach out anytime, but falling in love with the house and then you realize, well, oops, it's way out of the budget. So please keep that in mind. It makes the whole process a lot easier and it honestly will save you from some serious heartbreak. So if this video, not if, I know that it did, but if it helped you, uh, with a couple points, or even if it made you giggle just a little, <laughs> you know what to do. Please like, subscribe, hit the button, leave us some comments, and if you've got any questions at all, please drop them in the comments. I love a good chat. Thanks for hanging out, showing some love, and until the next one, ciao for now.